For many of us, 2021 has been a year of difficulties, like the year before. It's definitely been a season of pain and, and challenge in all kinds of ways. I suppose there will be exceptions. Some of us will feel we've kind of escaped some of the more tangible problems. Uh, we might feel that we're fairly comfortable. We're kind of prosperous. We're, we're just getting through the difficulties that society is hitting. But under the surface, under, under the skin, we will all be in different ways struggling with questions all the time. I think there are questions of, of disappointment. Is, is this really everything that I hoped that my life would be? Questions of regret. Would it be possible to go back and start again from somewhere? Did I go wrong at a certain point? Maybe questions that go further still into a sense of guilt or shame, stuff that we regret on a profound level. We know there are things in our past that feel like stains, feel like debts that need to be paid off and cleared away. We know there's just stuff in our lives. And then there's fear. We might not show it much on the surface, but we worry about the future. We worry about what it might bring and then the ultimate worries of what does it come to? Where is it all going? What about death? These are the kind of realities of human existence that year by year, Christmas by Christmas, we find ourselves facing. It seems to be part of our very family tree, something that we've inherited as ordinary human beings just by being part of the species, part of the family. We, we also, I think, can't help a sense that we weren't meant for this. We were meant for something greater. We were meant for something more noble. We were meant for, for glory. The Bible talks about that, it talks about God's intention to, to bring us to destiny, to glory. Think of it like this, like if you've seen a huge redwood tree, like one of those in the forests in California, one of those magnificent evergreens that just seems to go on forever, towering above the landscape. Maybe that's a picture of what we were intended to be as humanity, climbing higher, going to greatness. And yet what we really seem to inherit is more like a Christmas tree, cut off short and covered over with tinsel, covered over with decorations, you know, somehow getting away with looking in our domesticated uh, situation as though we're kind of happy, kind of jolly, covered in glitter, covered in some kind of Christmas array, but actually cut off from our life source, cut off from purpose, dead spiritually and even dying physically. This is the way the Bible actually talks about our circumstances. It sets it up in stark terms. We weren't meant to live such lives of regret, guilt, shame, fear. We were meant for glory, but we've been brought by our own wrongdoing to this cut off condition. But what we can celebrate is the God who became one of us the God who joined us in our horrendous condition. The Bible talks about humanity as having purpose. What is man that you are mindful of him, it says, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You've crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. But what we do see is humanity reduced to guilt, shame, fear, sorrow. But what God has done is he's become one of us and he's faced all of our troubles. He faced them down one after another. You read the stories of how he dealt with the, 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 the challenges, sickness, guilt, shame, how he, he dealt with the troubles that surrounded him. He dealt with all kinds of enemies. Even the forces of nature seemed to come under his control. And then he had to face the greatest enemy of all because in choosing to be born, he was choosing to die. But what Jesus did in his death, he did for all of us. 
He died a God-forsaken death. He didn't have to. We had to. We were the ones that had chosen death. But he actually chose it instead of us. And he, in his death, took on our worst enemy of all and then rose up in glory. He's defeated our greatest enemy. He's won for us. One of my favorite memories of 2021 was England versus Germany in the Euros. When Raheem Sterling put in his goal, the whole nation seemed to rise up as winners. <laughs> We'd won. Of course we hadn't won. We weren't anywhere near the ball, not even at the stadium, most of us. But because he'd won, we'd won. Because he put in the winner, we felt the victory. At Christmas, we celebrate the one who is a champion, a victor for us. He came and did what we couldn't do. He did it for us. And he's triumphed over our greatest enemies. And he offers us now his father. He offers us now relationship with him. The Bible says he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. So we are offered that kind of friendship with the God who came to redeem and restore us.